how to gather data that looks something like this from students, or in this case, uh, a conference that I'm attending, and I wanted to find out what people are interested in. So here's what it is. We have limited time, and we need to increase engagement. And the number one thing that teachers say to me when I'm doing presentations is they want to know, how do I better engage students? What you're seeing on the left side of the screen here are the teacher assessment components from the Danielson model that Washington State uses. These are the wonderful things that we teacher people focus on getting better at. Uh, these are measurable things that we focus on each year. So when I do a conference, I like to ask teachers, like, which of these matter most to you? What do you want to focus on? Because at a conference, I like to focus on standards. And since there are teachers at this conference, here are the teacher standards. Now think of your classroom. What if you were to have a survey and we ask students, and let me go over and show you this. This um, information comes from a Google form. And I simply have a standard, and a one would mean, no thanks, I'm good, meaning not really as interested in covering that. That could be for a number of reasons. Maybe they already know quite a bit about that, or it just doesn't sound interesting to them. But number five, yes, I want to know more now. You know, this is like polarized, like yes, no. Um, so I'm gathering data on this. Now, it's not perfect, but what I'm trying to do is gather enough information that I can then prioritize the most important things according to my audience. And it's the audience engagement that matters most. So you have to meet people where they're interested in. And again, since there's too much to cover, I need to prioritize with the limited amount of time and resources I have. That's exactly what distance learning is. It's a limited amount of time that we have to focus on the most important things. So why not get information from our audience or our students to see where they're at and what we can do to tailor the experience to be more interesting to them. So how do I take all this data and I make it really colorful like this? Uh, I'm going to show you right now. And it's using uh, Google Forms to get the information and then you go to Google Sheets and then we're gonna do some sorting stuff that's kind of fun. And I'll explain all that right now. So I go back here. So here's the information. Now first off, if you're looking at it, what I do is I click up here to select all. And if you grab any column and you make it a certain width, it resizes the whole spreadsheet to that width. I just want to show you that because I did that to make these smaller. Now I just undid it because I wanted to keep these relatively you know, the same size as they were before. Um, but this data right here is what I want to massage. I want to work with so it's more visual so I can see what's going on. So first off I have all the standards at the top and this is the way a Google form kind of lays it all out. The timestamp, the student name. Now this I, I made this information generic. Now this used to be teachers who are at the conferences, their first name, last name, questions that they have. I just left this stuff in there. Uh, but I did scrub personal information out of here because I didn't want you to see that and it didn't matter to anybody else uh, that it be there. And so I want to make sure I protect people's privacy. So here's the information. Now, first thing I like to do is I go in and I'm going to insert a column. And so what I did is I'm right clicking and or control clicking on a Mac if I'm using the clicker button. And I'm going to insert a function. So I go like this and I go to insert function. Now there's some keyboard shortcuts for you tech savvy people. You're going to know some more efficient ways to get to certain elements of what I'm doing. Notice I clicked and dragged all the way down and I'm now going to hit enter or return. And when I go back to the top, there it is. Right up here in the corner here, the sum is adding up H3, woo, right there to H32. And it's adding it all up. Now if I click and I hold and drag across the columns, it's going to copy and paste that function all the way across. And I'm now doing Command B on the Mac. Command is what you use when you're doing shortcuts. On a PC, it's Control. So right now, I have the total of each column. And that's interesting. I'm going to sort this in a transpose in a moment. And if I just blew your mind with what I was saying, just wait, wait, you know, we'll get there. But right now, what I want to do is I want to also add up each of these rows. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to insert a function over here, insert function. I have to make the sound effect. And I go like this, and then I hit enter or return, and voila. And I'm gonna go like this and drag down. And we go like so, keep going, and bada bing, bada boom. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna sort, I'm gonna select the whole spreadsheet, and I'm gonna sort the AD column so that I have the highest numbers at the top. And it kinda looks like we're already there. Oh, you know why? 
Hey, I'm going to show you how to do it anyway because I already did that. I was cheating a little bit. Normally, it's not in that kind of fashion. But when I was messing with this data before, I already pre-sorted it. But what I would do is I would simply go up to data and sort range, and then you pick the column. And the column was AD. So I go over here and I select column AD. I'll go down here. And I'm going to do Z to A because I want the biggest at the top. Now you'll notice that it took and shoved all the other stuff down here because it, there were no numbers in here. Um, and I'm going to undo because what happens is um, if I, <laughs> it's one of those things, if I want to make sure these stayed here and they don't have any data in them, I could put in some data that I know is much larger so it stays there. Now I'm going to do this again just because, again, there's numerous ways to do things, but I'm going to, I, I hate it when a tech person does something and they say, oh, it works, but just if it doesn't work the way they say and then you're trying to do it, you know, voila. So it did maintain this. So now um, you'll see when I transpose why this is important, have the highest numbers at the top. And then I have all the standards across here. Now the standards are not in order. They're in the order. Um, they are, no, no, they are in the order. Okay, cool. They're in, al in alphabetical order, or numerical order, or whatever you want to say for the, the way uh, Danielson is laid out. So they're in order there by number, number and letter. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the spreadsheet. We're going to transpose. So here's how this works. I'm going to take all the data that I care about. And now for sake of simplicity, I'm going to Command C for copy or Control C. And these numbers correspond with the names over here. Now if I wanted to keep the names, well here, I'll, let me just do that. I'll take first name and I'll put it right here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go and I'm going to transpose. So in, in my situation here, I just want to see the data. I didn't care about who was associated with it. But in this case, if it's your students, of course you want to. So I'll, I'll go like that. Now I copied all this material. So I do that and I do edit copy or command C or control C. And now I'm going to make a new tab down below here. So I click on the plus and it calls it sheet 12. I'm going to call it test two because I, I have some different things down here I've been playing around with. And I just click on a cell here. And then what I do is I click insert, but I have to be really, really careful here because what I want to do um, is I want to, wait, I don't want insert. I want edit, paste special, and go down to transpose. Transpose is going to take columns and turn them into rows and vice versa. So, you know, watch this. Okay. Now, what I have here is a lot of data. Let me make this smaller. So now it's all selected. Or if I click here, I'm going to, I'm going to select it again here. And I'm going to make everything smaller so it all fits on the screen. In fact, I'm going to make it really small just so I can see it all from one swing. Okay, so here's our stuff. And what I want to do is I'm going to double click this and I'm going to double click this so I can see my standards. I can see the numbers here and I can see these numbers here. Now what's happened is let's select all these and make them just a smidge wider. Yeah. So I just wanted to still fit on the screen and we have our students down here. Um, it depends on what you want to do. I personally like to, um, in a situation like this, I'm going to now sort and then I'm going to take these names and put them at the top again. And so what I do is I select all and I go to data and I go sort range and I want to sort it by B. So I'll go to column B and I want the, in reverse order here and voila. So what I'm going to do is, oh, reference error. That's interesting. Let's go like this. Um, that is interesting. I don't know why that happened. Let's get rid of this. This is great because when you have, <laughs> this didn't happen earlier. I'm just sorting this column so that um, all the rows are in order. And what happened is this sum right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select just the rows that I want to sort. And I'm going to leave these off of it. And I'm going to go up to um, data. And I'm going to sort range. I'm going to do B again. And I'm going to go like this. And we sort. And it only sorts what's selected. So what I wanted is I wanted to have the number one standard that people wanted were most curious about. So you can see here, at the top here, you have standard 1F and then 3C, and so on and so forth. And what that does is that shows me that these are the things that 
the participants care most about. And then here I can see um, who is, by student name, who is most interested in the most stuff. So these two students here would have the most interest they put, you know, interest in everything. Now, either A, they're lazy and they just put fives for everything. That could be the case. Or they may be really curious. It's hard to know with the data here. Now, if I read some of the qualitative data, some of the comments they put in, that would tip me off. If they left them blank, that might mean that they're just not, they don't really care. So that puts them on my radar uh, to pay more attention to see, are they really interested in all this stuff? Or are they maybe a little lazy and not following through? Either way, they need support. And it's hard to know until you start to see the behaviors and whatnot. But again, the information kind of tips me off on where to pay attention. But you can see here as things fall off, uh, numbers-wise down below here, that means that these people most likely have more experience or they're just ge generally less interested in those particular topics. You know? But we want to focus on the interest. Now, last thing we're going to do is we're going to color code this because the colors really kind of jump out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select all. And I'm going to format, and I'm going to do condi conditional formatting. Now, the way this works is that you can color code by anything in a particular, any data in a cell. So what I do is I go up here, and I'll say text that is exactly, and I'm going to say five, and then I click done, and now all the fives are highlighted. And what I'll do is I will select all again, and I'm going to add another rule, and I like to use different colors. So I'm going to do, um, I did a kind of a green here. Let's do a blue and not empty. It is exactly four. Okay. And I like the warmer colors. It depends. I like to draw attention to either cooler or warmer, depending in positive or negative or more interest or less interest. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three and exactly three. And I'm going to go here and I'll make that orange. And ooh, now actually, let's make it yellow. Oh, that is yellow. Okay, <laughs> fine. And then we're going to add one more. And this one is not empty. It is exactly two. And we're going to go here, and we're going to make it orange-er. There we go. And then we're going to do one more. And what I like to do here is in this one, we'll make red. And it is not empty. It is exactly one. And I click OK. And there we go. And I will close the rules. And now I can see my information. What I have here, again, is if I look up in this area, I'm going to have, again, more of what people are interested in. And I'm going to then have the students who are more interested in the content here and the ones who are less interested over here. Again, there's a lot to unpack on whether they're interested or not. But the idea is if you're trying to do something this for the students, the survey doesn't take very long. They go into the Google form, fill out some stuff, and voila. And then what you just saw me do here is I'm taking a look at the information, reading the qualitative data that the students wrote in about their interests, their goals for the class, things like that. And then I take a look at this related to the specific standards we're going to be measuring in the course, and I can start to chart a course. Now, you can, again, massage the language to be, do you know anything about this particular standard and have a scale of 1 to 5 or something like that? But I'm showing you this because this is 100% homemade, using Google Forms and Sheets. And what you can do um, is do a pre-assessment like this to find out what they're interested in, then do another assessment uh, as you're moving through the course. Because I find that as students move through the material, they become more interested in other areas, and then keep that data. But again, get the survey in a good, good shape so that you can use it in the beginning, middle, and end to see how the students are self-reporting on their interests or understanding of particular comment their content. And that is how I get this information to help make decisions on what to focus on or where the audience is interested in. Thanks for watching.